And I've always wanted to help Japanese startups uh, go global. Robert, thank you so much for coming here this morning. Yeah, thank you for and having me. And coming early. <laughs> when we were supposed to be here, it certainly came an hour early. I right. like that. Right. I like that because I'm always here before anyone comes in. I'm the first one in. Well, I thought I'd get here early to practice my lines. Is so. that you? You have some lines? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Right. But. I like to start off with by asking people where where were you born? I was born in Long Branch, New Jersey. Okay. But let me tell you something about that. I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed about that because my my family lived all over the world. My parents met each other in Mexico City in 1965. Uh, they they got married. They had a baby. I think in that order. Um, and then um, my dad got a job with uh, a, an American bank, Manufacturers Hanover Trust, which sent him to the Philippines, which then sent him to Hong Kong, which then sent him to Japan in 1976. The same bank? Same bank. So he's a banker? He, he was a banker, yeah. What, what did he do? What was, his, what was his job in the bank? Do you know? I have no idea. You have no idea? No idea. Right. You, you know, when you're a kid, right, you're just right, these right. talking heads. And what, yeah. what number are you? I mean, you said there were six, six. of you. You have, you yeah. have five siblings. Yeah, there's six. And what number are but, you? But the reason, I'm number two. Okay. But the reason I'm embarrassed about Long Branch, New Jersey, is that the rest of my siblings are born in exotic places like Me Mexico City, Hong Kong, Japan. Long Branch, New Jersey. But so. See, that's exotic to all the people that are from Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I don't Japan. think it's exotic to <laughs> you. Were born in Long Branch. Uh, if you're uh, here in Japan, <laughs> you, you tell people that they go, "Wow, where's that?" Right, right, right. Exactly. That's nice. <laughs> so you spent a lot of time here in Japan too. Yeah, we moved here in uh, in 1976. But you know, my dad, um, the entire time we lived in Japan, he was in the reserve. Which one? Uh, Navy. Navy reserve. Navy okay. reserve. But so every month he went out um, and, and spent a day, uh, actually at Yokota. Why at Yokota? I have no idea even. Oh, I think because that's where the PX was. Your father, he was an officer in the, in the reserves, wasn't he? He was, okay. he was. So he had been, he had done four years in the Navy, 60 through 64, um, stationed in the Philippines. Okay. That's where he fell in love with Asia. Well, who's above you? Uh, my older sister, Anne. How many years difference? Three. Are all of you close, your siblings? Yeah, we're all close. We still group chat every day. Um, that is I, actually, our group chat, the name is called Meguro Sharps, because we grew up in Meguro. Right. Yeah, so that's the group, the name of the group chat is Meguro Sharps. And like you were saying, I probably did have one of your sisters in my class. I think my younger at sister, she was an SIJ. Uh, Nishimachi. Well, then I didn't have her. Oh, okay. No, okay. Because that's when Mrs. Kat, Mrs. Matsukata was there they, and everything, yeah, and I knew yeah. her. So we, um, all six sharps went to Nishimachi. Uh, my That's mother, why I know you, yes. my mother was the librarian, okay. and my father was on the board of trustees. Um, and at that time, Nishimachi was was very small. It was. So, so I mean, we, the campus we, was wider. You could walk through it and not know that you'd walk through we, it. We, we, sharp family made up like ten percent <laughs> of the student body population. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that, that, you know, that, was, that was the 70s and 80s. Those were the days. Those were the days. And you stayed here until how old? My, my family was here till 88. But how old were you when you left? I, I was 17. I graduated from ASIJ in 1987. And you guys had club membership as well. So we you did. So American club. So you, we did. You remember the curtains up there in the teen center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the little basketball court right, down there. Right, in, the, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. half court. Yeah. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, that little yeah, half, half court. Half court down the But basement. with two baskets. Yeah, so you play baskets, full right, right. court on a half court. Right, 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 right. It was very messy. It yeah. sure was, yeah. yeah. The ceiling was low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got, Outside shots right. would hit the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, those were the days. They were, they were. Yeah. They were really good. And yeah. the pool, they had the diving board. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. wow. You remember all of that. Yeah. And, um... And so during that time, what were you, I, I know, you, I'm, well, you're supposed to be interviewing I mean, but, me, but, but, what, but so what were you doing during that time? Because well, I remember you from, from back then. Because, well, I was the only black guy around at that <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But after teaching, after yeah. leaving the military in 76, then yeah. I got a job at the American School from 77 to 80. Okay, so that's before the Sharps went there. Yeah. 
You're right. Yeah. So I was, I was physical education teacher in elementary school. Okay. And I did that for three okay. years. And then I formed my own company. It was a gymnastics company. Okay. That, that's what I know you as, right. the, the gymnastics guy. Gymnastics guy, guy yeah. right. Yeah. And then after that, then I had a medical equipment company where I bought and sold used CT scanners. Oh. I okay. got them here in Japan because it was a bubble time. They were throwing away brand new yeah. three three year used CT scanners, and, and I would get them and that's refurbished and that's clean expensive up. gear, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Even when it's sold used. But but what, <laughs> I mean, the Japanese aren't known for for buying used used they wouldn't, product. At that time, matter of fact, they would then. Or interesting no? story, Robert. What I would do is I'd go to all the manufacturers. There are five of them. Yeah. That made CT scanners in the states. No, here. Oh, here, here. Okay. And I would tell them. It's my company, yeah. but I never told anyone else. Yeah. Everyone else thought I was the marketing director and technician because they wouldn't believe I owned the company. Right. And all, Toshiba, Hitachi, and, and, and Shimazu said they would never get into used equipment. Right. It's right. a bubble time. They, we, right. Please take our garbage. Yeah, yeah. Three years used. They maintain it perfectly. Yeah. So That's I did. Yeah. But after the bubble burst, guess who was out of the business right away. Yeah. Me, because all of them, the people that retired went in the same business I was doing okay. that I developed that okay. they didn't know anything about. But were you buying the, the, the Japanese product and selling it into the States? Yes. Okay. And okay. everywhere around the world, but I yeah. wasn't buying it. They were paying me to take it out. They were paying you. <laughs> <laughs> what a gig. <laughs> Was so you're getting paid on both good. ends? On both ends. It, yeah. was, it was so good. Wow. Robert, it was just... And, and the, th they must have been impeccably maintained. They were. Almost like they, new. Listen, yeah. everyone yeah. I shipped them to, and not only that, the way they were packaged in the 40-foot containers I put them in, they said, Lance, there's so much wood in here, we could start a side business. So I have an in interesting story I'm telling you. Th that's relevant to this. When we were kids living in Meguro, um, W w the, the sharp kids, we used to go digging through the trash, Japanese trash, because they'd throw away things that were, were pristine. And, and so we'd, we'd dig through the trash. So one night, we get a knock on the door. It, it's the local omawari-san, right? The, right, right, the, the policeman. And they right. said, we'd like to speak to your parents. And uh, in hushed tones, we, uh, you know, uh, we heard this conversation as kids. And then the, when, they, when the police left, my parents said, no more digging through trash. And we say, why? And they say, well, they, they wanted to know if we were having financial issues <laughs> and that if we needed help, uh, you know, of course, <laughs> here we are, six gaijin in an expat home, right? right? And we said, but, but you know, were we having financial problems and did we need help because the kids were digging through trash? And we were just looking for all these know, goodies. For, they oh, had I mean, it was amazing what they would throw out back then. It's yeah. Interesting, Robert, I just had a guest on who was talking about how she furnished her first apartment here yeah. <laughs> with the trash the Japanese yeah. had thrown out. Yeah. Because she's been here 25 years. And yeah. she said, oh, you know, it sounds funny, but it, you had ideas. It's like new. It's brand yeah. new. They yeah. didn't know, there was no such thing as having it repaired or fixed. Right. You right. just tossed it out. Right. <laughs> it right. got a scratch on it. It's time to toss it yeah. out. I actually uh, went to a thrift store yesterday in Omote Sando. You mean one of those Hyakuyen stuff stores? Uh, it's in Omote Sando, so it's okay. a little nicer, but okay. <laughs> the clothing was, was, was nice. It, it wasn't like a thrift shop on uh, Haight Street in San Francisco. See, because that's where you. you're living now, right? Yeah, I'm in San okay. Francisco. So you're just yeah. back and forth every now and then. You uh, can't leave, you can't get Japan out of your blood, right? I cannot. Why, I is, cannot. It? Why is that? Well, um, I mean, I, I, my family lived here for 12 years. Um, most of my close friends are, you know, f from Nishimachi or ASIJ. It's still, you know, 40 years later, it's still a very strong bond. It's something that's very important to me, and our, the network is just so tight, you know, the Nishimachi and ASIJ network. Um, and then, I, uh, I, it's just, you know, I just, I'm still in love with Japan, and I still love coming back here. And even after a... 30-year career in San Francisco in Silicon Valley. Doing what? Um, t technology, okay. technology business, um, mostly related to video technology. So a lot of the gear I see right. here, I'm, right. I'm familiar with. Vi video technology from from the mid '90s, um, where we made a, a software application that compressed video, and we went around telling people that this video, that y you can shrink this video, analog video. You can capture it, you can shrink it, and you can put it on the internet. And people would laugh us out of their offices. Um, and uh, so, th and then in the early 2000s, I worked for a Japanese uh, 
a video technology company. You never, what happened to the compressing the video? Did you? We did sold sell? the company. But you did well we, on the selling it, I mean. We, we did, yes. Okay. We right. did, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then after that, uh, I worked for a Japanese video technology company um, in early 2000s. Did you have to come back to Japan to do something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is your wife Japanese by any chance? No, no, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't have a wife. Okay. I have an ex-wife, right. right. and I have a partner of nine years. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm in between wives. In between wives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, but I've been with my current uh, partner. I've been with her for nine years. Nine yeah, years. Yeah, almost ten years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's she's common law. She's not Japanese. It's common law. No, okay. she's she's from right. Sacramento. Right. Is this a sharp thing then? <laughs> <laughs> but you, 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 you told me you guys aren't Mormons. No, no, Do, not were you, yet. Were you religious? No. Were you religious? No, not at all. Not at all. How did your father maintain? Would, would your mother? What were your mom and dad like? I'm just curious because being a father of four, yeah, yeah. and and talking to so many families, yeah. I really learned how to parent from being here and talking to good families, yeah, and particularly large families, which yeah. a lot were. Well. You know, my mom. My mom only gave birth four times. You adopted two. The last two. Uh, no, there's twins, and then the last one is uh, is uh, Shizue. She's Japanese, which was and adopted. It was adopted. The okay. six. We six had one. five kids and adopted okay. the six. Okay. So when you say what were my parents like, they they were crazy. <laughs> yeah, they crazy. adopted That's the kind six. Of crazy one should be. That is yeah, beautiful. but but the interesting story about this is in. In, in late 70s, I forget exactly what year, is we went down to Osaka to meet Shizue. And uh, she was around three or four years old at the time, and she was living um, in a Buddhist temple. And we went down to meet her. The, we weren't going to bring her home or anything. It was just a meet and greet, warm her up. Um, and so we go down there. Um, she'd never met a foreigner in her life. Um, and uh, we we took her uh, to the zoo, the Osaka Zoo. Um, and uh, at, the, at that time, so we went and her memory of this later was, was she saw monkeys at the zoo, which she'd never seen before. Um, so the visit went really well. And afterwards, I guess the, the, um, the adoption agency, or the adoption people, they, they asked Shizue, they said, well, would you like to go home with this family now? And she said, well, yeah, I guess I, I can go live with monkeys. Do you remember how old <laughs> you were? But she, she. Do you remember how old you were during this time? Ten. Okay, ten. so you remember the whole yeah. family went. Yeah, the whole and, family. And you, but you knew that uh, you might possibly come back with her. Is we we didn't think we would. But we why, thought why we were just going gonna down? just why? to meet her, and but then why? maybe we'd why? come. Why? You were thinking about adopting. I was ten. I, yes, we were thinking oh, about adopting. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. We we were going to meet her, and then maybe go back. So your a family was later. the type of family who would get together and they would include everyone. You guys would sit down and have a discussion about it. Yeah. As if like you had something to do with it. Yeah. yeah. Which you really did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was because I remember there were uh, some Japanese adoption agencies that came to our house pretty regularly for it was a long time ago, and I was young, but it, a, a couple of years, they'd come in and spot it's check. Hard, it is very right? difficult to adopt Japanese children. Yeah, they'd spot very check. Difficult, yeah. yeah, to see how this family of monkeys luckily, was doing. And yeah. luckily, you weren't in the trash cans <laughs> yeah. by then. I think no, you stopped all I that, think, right? I think, this <laughs> was, I think this was after the trash can incident. <laughs> That is yeah. something. Yeah. So, so she remembered that situation. She remembered seeing she'd go home and live with the monkeys. She conflated the two, right? She'd right, never met a foreigner or a monkey. A monkey right. so <laughs> and, and us, you know, six kids who right. were just kind of, wa compared to Japanese kids, we were wild of and course, out of control, yeah, yeah, right? right, right, right like, of course. Okay, sure. I'll go live with the monkeys. <laughs> How's she doing now? She's great. She, uh, she lives in Honolulu with her husband. Um, Who's not Japanese? He is not Japanese. He's of <laughs> he he grew up in the Bay Area, but he's of uh, Chinese uh, ancestry, um, and they come to Japan quite frequently. Yeah, that is so nice. Yeah. So tell me, so you're back here? Yeah. On a visit, do you have, what are your plans while you're back here? Well, I, I spent 30 years in San Francisco Silicon Valley technology scene, um, mostly with startups that nobody's ever heard of. Um, s s most of them did not do well. Um, a few did, thankfully. And you were, you were connected with those few that you yes, started with? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So, right. so 
Um, a, a, a few of them did, did pretty well. A lot of them didn't, um, but uh, I learned a lot from those. And so after 30 years, um, my youngest son, I have two children, a 23-year-old and a 19-year-old. 23-year-old girl um, and a 19-year-old boy. The 23-year-old has a coffee business in San Francisco, um, which is really thriving. And the 19-year-old is an art major uh, in college. Um, but when the 19-year-old left um, to go to college, my, my partner and I decided to hit the road. I quit my day job. Um, uh, not but you, I, uh, and, but you and his mother had already separated. Yeah, yeah, okay. the, the decade before. But was he living with you? Um, he was living with me. Okay, yeah. did your daughter live with you as well? She did, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, but they're close with their mom too? Yes. Okay, yes. but you said, yeah, my kids. <laughs> my kids, they're my kids, yeah. So, um, okay. so at, at, at the, when, when my son left the house, um, I also thought, you know, this is a good time. I've always wanted to help Japanese startups uh, go global. Um, historically, Japanese startups have really just focused on the domestic Japanese market. It's a big market, um, and it wasn't necessary, or they're just they didn't feel the need to go global. Well, thing, things are changing, right? The the population is shrinking. The economy has slipped into fourth place behind Germany now. That's like, right, that's right. you know, that was a, a real shock. Um, right. And so, I, I think more than ever, it's important for Japanese startups to really think globally from the outset. Um, and I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to help them. But you know, kids, jobs, you know, life, life got in the way. But finally, when my son went to college, um, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm going to try to split my time between San Francisco and Japan, um, and I'm going to, well, I'm going to meet startups who want to go global, and I'm going to help them do that. And, and so that's one of the reasons here, because I'm now, um, uh, I, I don't want, I, I, not, not retired, I'm not retired, um, I'm just, I don't have a, a day job. Right, it's hard uh, to say, when someone says, what do you do, you say, it's, it's hard and it feels uncomfortable to say whatever you want to do. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so I'm far, I'm far, I'm far from, from retired, but what I, what I am, I don't have a, a, a daily operational right. job. Um, I, I am a go, you know, my LinkedIn title says go-to-market advisor. Right. Um, and I'm working, I'm working with a couple startups um, in, in Silicon Valley. Um, and uh, I still ha actually have a company on the side uh, that, that has been around for 10 years that's, that's doing okay. What type of company? Um, I, actually, you might be interested in this. It's, uh, I started this 10 years ago because I had all these old mini DV tapes. Okay. Remember mini DV tapes? I still tapes? have a whole bunch of them that I haven't put over to made digitally yet. Well, well, let me pitch you on this. Thing. Okay. Um, so I had a whole bunch, I had a whole bunch of them, but I... Family, uh, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all these memories. Um, and I was having a, a heck of a time capturing them. Because um, what, some had deteriorated? Some had deteriorated, but, but more so the, the modern, I, I'm a Mac guy, but right. the modern Macs just weren't really capable of capturing them anymore. It didn't really the the fire. Remember, FireWire right, is what, FireWire, you know right, is the right, technology exactly. that's used. Um, using iMovie to capture these old tapes um, was just problematic, and and Apple had started deprecating some of the technology, the FireWire technology, and it just became more and more difficult. So I created this product called LifeFlix, and what it does is it's it's a dedicated capture import tool for old tapes. What is it? Is it just the wires? It's just the soft. No, it's just the software. The software. So you got so to still have the camera, and then you need you need the, the FireWire wire. and Thunderbolt oh. cable. You you need like three you need, cables. You like. need three cables. Yeah, because you need. Wait, you, but you but you're doing this to a laptop. You're doing it to your laptop. Okay, though. to your laptop. But how much? Spe well, because that's a, that's that's heavy stuff too when you bring it in your. Tapes so uncompressed. One sixty-minute DV tape is thirteen gigabytes. That's right. Yeah, but if but if you compress it, if you bring it in compressed, it's about three. But then you have to uncompress it to see it. No, you can watch it while it's compressed. Yeah, because it uses QuickTime to compress it. Oh, okay. So so while it, you can capture but will it, it still either be can you still get the ten eighty 
image you can no, no because, because it's old SD. It's, it's, old, it's standard SD. definition. Right. That's right. That's right. But the LifeFlix has a tool that will upscale it to HD. Upscale HD. Yeah. yeah. Would it look good? It it looks fine. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It looks fine. Yeah. In in fact, I had some old footage. Um, from my daughter's like kindergarten days, so 20 years ago that was shot in SD. And when she graduated from high school, um, we put it up on a big screen it projector okay. and I had upscaled it to HD a and it Came looked okay. Nice. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so. That's nice. Yeah. Because I remember those days when we were really fixed on the definition. Yeah. Because it yeah. came out so it SD is all you had, you know. Right, so right. Four by three. It's four right, by like three. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You're uh, you you know when you like when you when you look at something four by three now, right, like you're right. like, you know. what was this a hundred <laughs> years ago? What is this? Right? It wasn't it that was, long it ago. It wasn't that long ago. No. Because technology just advanced so quick because what's yeah. the theory they use? It uh, uh, Moore's Law? Moore's or? Law, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It just keeps uh, advancing and advancing. It's just too, so fast. But I, I heard something the other day from a musician. He was saying that we spent trillions of dollars on AI. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. But we're spending nothing on HI. Yeah. What, human intelligence? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So we're getting mm. our machines to be stronger than us. What about us? Yeah. And we should. But what yeah. we're going to do, yeah. what we're doing already, is implementing it. Yeah. We're trying yeah. to find out how we can wire it into our system because we've made this thing and it's valuable to us and we don't think this is so, you know, so yeah. sharp. So let's just yeah. plug things into it and see yeah. if we can build the functionality externally instead yeah. of trying to do it internally by investing in HI. Yeah, yeah. Which we could do. So what uh, kind of companies are you interested in helping? So, uh, yes. Make it easy for the layman. Make it easy for the layman. Um, so in the United States, uh, it, it's software companies. For okay, so for that's what you're really for sure. For sure. C C so that, that's in the U.S. and and most of them are um, sort of seed stage. You know, they've raised a little bit of money, um, but they're very early on. You know, very early on. Um, in, in Japan, you're talking about in the U.S. that you that you're helping. Yeah, that I'm currently helping. Yeah. Well, how many companies are you helping in the U.S.? One. Sort of one. one. Well, if you count my my co my own you're company too, you're doing that all the time. Yeah. So you're one. Yeah. So what you, yeah. how do you how do you, what do you call help? What does help mean? So the current company me. in the U.S. Um, came out of a program called Y Combinator. Um, y Combinator uh, is an incubator for startups, and it's it's very well regarded, and they graduate about six hundred companies a year, um, and. What am I? What I'm doing for this company is actually very similar to what I did 30 years ago. Like I'm writing copy. I'm I'm helping them develop uh, the the technology to go to market. The technology and the techniques to go to market. So, for example, I have helped them um, de-anonymize their web traffic. So people are coming. You know, people come to the what your website. You have no idea who they are. But now we're starting to identify who they are, and if they match a certain customer profile. So for this company, w we we want ad agencies. So if they're a director or a manager from an ad agency, then w we want to be able to reach out to them directly with a very personalized message. And so this is kind of a modern, um, you know, lead generation and prospecting system that I'm helping this company implement. Okay. Is that what they do? What is their business? Th their business is um, allows you to comment and collaborate on a live website. So right. let's say Nike and their ad agency um, want to comment on a certain page or a campaign. Traditionally, what we do is you know we'd, we'd email back and forth, we'd call, we'd send texts, we'd do slacks or team messages like. Uh, I want the red to be a little redder, and oh, there's a spelling mistake, right? And it just gets out of control, all the comments. So what this company does, um, it's called Superflow. Okay. <laughs> um, what, what it does is it allows the creative people and, and, and management and everything to be working on this website that's already publicly live, right? Like Nike.com, and make all the comments on the live website. 
in the background, if the Nike marketing manager and the ad agency are doing this, you and I as the public can't see of that. Course. Right? Right. Right. That, of course. That would be insane. Right. right. Yeah. You, you and I can't see it. Okay. But it's, it's a productivity and communication tool. Oh, yeah, but it's a small company, right? It's been around for a couple of years. It came out of Y Combinator. They and Y Combinator, when you said they graduate, they graduate with what? That means you. How long? Is they, they get a little bit courses? of funding. But um, how long are their courses? Is it a course actually that you go into, or you, you submit something? And they say, you know, they do. I think they do two classes a year, so it it, it may be a six month session. I I don't I I don't know exactly, but um, but but they go through they they go. It's for software companies. It could be any kind of technology. Any company. kind of technology. Yeah, okay. not just software. I think okay. a lot of them are right, you know, right, okay. software companies. Um, and, and there's companies from all over the world. Um, but, uh, the, you know, they, they just they go through a series of like little boot camps. Um, and there, there's a lot of mentors who, who, who teach them, you know, how to, how to build a business. Mm -hmm. And then there's pitch days at the end mm -hmm. where they typically can raise, you know, raise a little, a little bit of. Well, well is a lot of money. Is I mean. it expensive for them? Do you, do you know what it costs for people to get involved? Uh, no, Y Combinator pays them. They, they invest in, in the startup. I'm talking about when they join mm -hmm. their boot camp. Right. So I'm sure those so, are. So, so there, are, there are thousands of companies a year that submit an application to be part of Y Combinator. Okay. Um, the ones that are accepted, Y Combinator will invest in those companies. Like a, a few hundred thousand dollars or something okay. like that yeah if they think it's worthy if they, if they think, think it's worthy and then when it's they hard finish, to get in then then when you say when they graduate that's why comedy is saying we now deem you worthy yeah yeah of the outside you, so, you have gone so through our program to to you, right and right you've give, gone through our program um, and, then, and when you look at them you're saying that's a certification I really believe in exactly so these guys are going somewhere yeah exactly so okay. exactly so, so mm -hmm. I'm working with a Y Combinator graduate um, and, and and yeah like when, when you say you know how many companies are yeah I, I keep it very very narrow I'm not because um, you like you it, like to have are you hands yeah on? I'm, I'm very hands-on like I said that. I'm doing stuff I did 30 years right. I'm writing copy right. and I'm doing a B testing on the copy so yeah I'm not I'm, I don't have 20 clients I'm so you ask you find the companies that will let you get involved <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let is, the, I think, the right term. Of course, because when the guys yeah. are doing it, it becomes very, see, and, and particularly if they happen to be men, this is not a race, you know, it's not a sexist thing at all, but I'm <laughs> just telling the truth. Since we cannot have children of our own, right. our companies become our child. Right, it's true. It and it's true. hard for us to let other people hold it and try it to nurture true. it. You want to feed it to yeah, it? You yeah. want to give it a bath? I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. And we, we really touch you with our company. No, it's true. It's true. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I'm really hands on, um, which I think is like, particularly for someone my age who's. Which is, which is. 54. Oh, you're still a spring chair. Go ahead. <laughs> but I've been in the business for 30 years, and I think a lot of people who've been doing it that long want to maybe just be an advisor, right? A call a week or something like that. But I, I, I really learning. enjoy... You're still learning. I'm, well, in and the past year, to. I talked about de-anonymizing web traffic and all of these, like... Uh, I haven't heard that term before. Uh, good. Because you'd have to be... <laughs> Because you'd have to be in that field to hear it. Yeah, yeah. So, so it used to be like to prospect, to find leads. You know, the, it was spray and pray, right? Okay, okay. You'd email ten thousand people right, and hope yeah. to get a few meetings. Well, now you're really, we're trying to build authenticity. Like, I, I, I want, and, and what that is is it means Superflow, the company I'm working with, it has a product that really can solve a pro so problem for a certain customer profile. And we really just want to talk to those people. And we're not trying to hoodwink them, right? We're trying to say, look, we built this for you. Can we get your feedback? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so the idea is, yeah, we don't want to go out there and, and you know, flip the yellow pages and, and <laughs> call random numbers. Like, we really want to talk to marketing managers and directors at ad agencies. And if you can get and with them in Japan, uh, well, this, right, is this is global. We're most, yeah, it's, it's global. global. It's global. For Superflow, we're mostly focused on on the U.S. right now. Because okay. um, you figure once you get there, you hit so many countries just by doing that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, but the reason I'm here is I'd, I'd like to find another company that I could help 
There's um, Japanese. That's Japanese <laughs> that wants to expand into the U.S. market. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not through the Superflow. Not through Superflow. No, just it would be a, a completely just, separate yeah, company. Right. Yeah. It would company. be a completely separate company. Yeah. Yeah. And one. Just one. You're just looking for just one. one um, I hope you heard that. One company. Just one Robert's company. here. You'll be able to contact him through this <laughs> yeah. podcast so you can do this. Yeah, just right. one company. And I'm like I said, I'm very, you know, I'm very hands on um, finding customers or, or even investors or partners in the United States. Um, uh, Helping them find investors and partners in the United States. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So well, how would people contact you? Well, probably the best way is uh, through our my website. Okay, which is? www.shoshagroup.com. So Shosha, like trading company, shoshagroup.com. And then you have some AI in the background that will actually <laughs> filter it and <laughs> bring in the people that you're really interested in. You know, it, it's it's a one-page brochure. One page so brochure, no, AI, yeah, yeah, no, not, not need, just HI. Just yeah, HI. Just HI. There you go. Yeah, yeah no go. HI, AI needed, yeah. Robert, I want to thank you. Before I end this podcast, yeah. there's a question I like to ask everyone. If you could go back in time mm -hmm. and meet the younger Robert Sharp. Yes. And give him advice. Yes. How old would he be and what advice would you give him? Uh, he, he would be eight and I, and I would tell him to learn kanji. <laughs> but you speak Japanese pretty well. I, I can speak, I'm probably intermediate, okay. the intermediate level. And I can read and write hiragana and katakana, of course, but my kanji is... Uh, non-existent. Well, it's never too late. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's never too late. It's just, do you want to put time in doing that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I do some, like, conversation exchange uh -huh. things just to, to keep my Japanese up. Right. And they always online, ask. Online, you mean? O online, yeah, online, Excuse when I'm in the States and mm -hmm. stuff. And the, the people, they always ask me, they say, well, d do you want to work on kanji? I said, nope. And they said, do you want to work on keigo? I go, nope. <laughs> they said, well, what do you want to do? I said, just, I just want to talk. I just want to keep it up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. What am I asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to be you just want to be able to communicate. If you can communicate, you're good to go. I'm give it. I give up on kanji and keigo long ago. Yeah, yeah. Robert, I want to thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thanks, Lance. It's great thank seeing you. you. I want to thank all of you for watching or listening to this podcast, and never forget, it's all on loan. So continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed.